Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the medication class, tocolytics. So let's get into it. Tocolytics, their job is to suppress preterm labor. So toco, this first part of the word, refers to contractions. And then lytic, like lysis, like kill. So we're killing the contractions. We're stopping the contractions. These are usually given anywhere between 24 and 34 weeks if a mom or a patient presents in preterm labor. These are not given prophylactically. These are only given if a patient presents in preterm labor. The intention of these is not to make you go to term. If you come in at 24 weeks and we give you a tocolytic, we are not expecting you to go to 40 weeks, right? That would be great, but that's not really their intention. Their intention is to buy you a little bit of time so that we can prepare for this preterm delivery and you can get something called betamethasone, which I have a whole video about. I'll put it down in the, the comments. So to give you enough time to administer a steroid called betamethasone, which is gonna help accelerate fetal lung maturity for the baby. It's important also to note that currently in the United States, none of these meds I'm going to talk about in these class are technically approved for this, okay? They are all considered off-label medications, but these are the ones that we use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down all of the big ones that we commonly use. Let's start with the most popular, most commonly given one, endomethacin. So endomethacin is an NSAID. It can be given either PO or rectally. Some common side effects for mom include things like dizziness, GI upset, and headaches, which is pretty common for NSAIDs. Something really special about this one though you wanna remember, Never give it after 32 weeks gestation because it can cause premature closure of the ductus arteriosus. And of course, we don't want that to happen until baby is born. So we don't want the fetal circulatory system to be messed with because of a medication. And another special thing about it, we wanna use caution in patients who have asthma or who have an aspirin allergy because they are more likely to experience side effects. Nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker, and that's what it does. It helps to prevent calcium from going into the smooth muscle of the uterus to reduce those contractions. It can be given oral or sublingual. Some side effects from mom are things like headache, dizziness, or hypotension. And this one is actually considered the best out of all of them because there are no recorded fetal side effects. So that's a really good bonus for this one. It's a good positive. Our next nut is magnesium sulfate. I did do a whole nother previous video all about magnesium sulfate, but that was more for its proper use, which is for preeclampsia. It is also sometimes used as a tocolytic. So let's talk about that. It is only given through continuous IV infusion, and it works very much like a calcium channel blocker does. And that's really important to know because we don't want to mix this medication with the calcium channel blocker because of that. Our biggest risk here, of course, mag toxicity. So if somebody's on magnesium sulfate, you need to do really good frequent head to toe assessments, checking their respiratory rate, checking their deep tendon reflexes, and then also taking a mag level daily. But kind of a special benefit of magnesium sulfate is it's been shown to have neuroprotective capabilities, meaning it may protect the fetal brain and could possibly reduce the risk of the infant developing cerebral palsy. So that's a really great thing of this medication, but very, very dangerous. These patients need to be very closely monitored. Tributylene is a beta adrenergic receptor agonist. The way this med works is activated beta-2 receptors increase your AMP, which in turn causes smooth muscle relaxation. So that's how it stops your contractions. Side effects. This is the one that has all the side effects. And I say that as somebody who has taken this medication before when I was pregnant. It's terrible. Zero out of 10. Would not recommend. 
So side effects include things like arrhythmias, tachycardia, nausea, vomiting. I had all of those things all at the same time. It was terrible. So not very popular. It actually has a black box warning. So not very commonly given anymore these days. And there are some studies that have suggested a possible risk of asthma development later in childhood for those fetuses. So just something to look out for. Not very commonly given, not very popular, but it used to be. It used to be very popular. A helpful way for you to remember these meds is it's not my time. So indomethacin, nymphetapine, magnesium sulfate, and tributylene. I also wanted to very briefly talk about oxytocin inhibitors. Now these medications are not approved in the United States. We don't use them in the United States, but I know I have a lot of international viewers and you might learn about these in school, so I wanted to very briefly touch on them. So they do exactly what they sound like. They compete at those receptor sites to help stop contractions from happening. Because remember, oxytocin, natural hormone that occurs in our body, is what's responsible for causing contractions. So this is another med you might learn in school if you do not live in the United States. When it comes to contraindications, who should not receive any sort of tocolytic? If you're beyond 34 weeks gestation, it is recommended that we don't give them. If mom, the patient, is dilated greater than four centimeters. If there are signs of an active infection or actively bleeding, we're not gonna, you know, enhance your labor. We're not gonna try and stretch it out. You need to have the baby. You need to deliver for your safety and the safety of the fetus. Any non-reassuring fetal heart tones, so your fetal heart rate is bad. There needs to be a delivery soon. And then any medical conditions like eclampsia, severe preeclampsia, mom has a heart condition, anything like that where we need to deliver sooner rather than later for the safety of the mom and the safety of the baby. Those would be contraindications to getting a tocolytic. When it comes to nursing interventions, education, of course, is key. Very, very important for this patient population to talk about the way these medications work and the purpose of these medications. Because if you're in preterm labor, you're worried about your baby, and they say, we're gonna give you a medication to stop your contractions, you're gonna be thinking, okay, great, I'm gonna not be in preterm labor anymore and I'll be able to deliver my baby at 40 weeks. So we wanna make sure that they understand, they have a realistic understanding of the way these medications work and what they're for. We also want to report side effects. So having the patient tell us if they're experiencing any of those dangerous side effects, like arrhythmias, tachycardia, hypotension, things like that. We want to place the patient on their left side. Just in general, we like to do this in OB because it helps increase placental perfusion. So more blood, more oxygen, more nutrients to the fetus. So it's a good thing. We want to assess their vitals assess for deep tendon reflexes, especially if they're receiving magnesium sulfate, and assess the fetal heart rate pattern per protocol of your institution. So depending on where you work, they might want you to do this continuously, every shift, every 15 minutes, and it also depends on what med they're on. If they're on magnesium, we're gonna need continuous fetal heart rate monitoring and then frequent vitals and DTRs because of that risk of toxicity. They're gonna be on strict INO, and then finally, of course, emotional support, because this is scary, right? These patients are worried about their health, they're worried about the health of their baby. So emotional support for these patients is gonna be huge. So that was my video on tocolytics. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.